Okay, folks, we'll start off with this article talking about how coronal mass ejections could strip away, sandblast the atmospheres, exospheres, or even the surface of a moon or a planet that doesn't have a global magnetic field. How very interesting, considering some of the things they've been telling us about over the last few weeks. Apparently, see some of these uh, recent droughts we've been having in Southern and Central America are the result of hundreds of years of farming going back to the Inca and the Maya. Apparently, when you change forest land to farmland, it increases the reflectivity of the surface, leaving far less energy energy for convection and precipitation. The Phobos grunt is dead in the water. It is coming back down to Earth. They aren't even trying to revive this thing anymore. It's not going to Mars. It's coming back down, and they're thinking that's going to happen January 13th. Folks in Australia are having a rough go of it these last couple of days, especially on the western side. The flooding is getting pretty bad, and a lot of the, uh, the coastal waterways and inlands are being inundated by blue-green algae. You might remember the last couple of days we've been talking about Solar Active Region 11363 saying it wasn't as big a threat as most people thought, uh, even when it was labeled Beta Gamma Delta. We didn't see a Delta spot. It has decayed from 35 sunspots down to 19, getting closer to that uh, magic number of 10 where we can see, uh, under which we see strong flares. But we have another Solar Active Region 11362, which is labeled Beta Gamma. Uh, magnetically complex and this one only has seven sunspots in the active region so it's worth taking a look at. Now when we come over here 13 uh, I'm sorry 11363 is the one that was labeled beta gamma delta but this is the one we're going to look at now 11362. Now remember this one has um, beta gamma classification if you look on the left where we have both positive and negative black and white you see uh, it's not just one side and the other side. You got white on both sides, so this is somewhat magnetically complex. And if you look over there on the right, see not a lot of sunspots, not a lot of holes of strong magnetism, not a lot of places to reconnect uh, if this thing becomes unstable. Folks, this is the last uh, week of critical frequency for the F1 layer of our ionosphere. Now, for those of you who haven't been keeping too much track of this, uh, you might need to do a bit more research, but we're steadily between 6 and 8 megahertz for this critical frequency. Now, that is pretty startling, not only for this time of year, but in general. This is the critical frequencies of the F1 layer going all the way back to 1999. It's pretty much, um, pretty much has done this as far as they can tell throughout history. And what's happening now is, is very strange. I actually don't even have uh, the latest one on here, and it's pretty much right up there with this, uh, these anomalous readings here at the end. Uh, so that's something to keep an eye on as we go forward, the F layer of our ionosphere. Last but not least, folks, on the induction magnetometer, we might have seen a bit of uh, little asymmetric PC1 pulsations that indicate the magnetosphere might be trying to repair itself after that uh, strong solar wind stream from the corona hole uh, this past weekend. So that's the news, folks. Be safe.